music. If you forgive a person and you hold on to the anger, the pain, every day you remember it, you go through it, you don't forget it, it still itches you. That means you don't understand what forgiveness is. Do you know that forgiveness pays you more than whom you are forgiven? Because when you forgive, you live freely. You, you run away from hypertension. You run away from being hot. You run away from keeping your mind depressed. That is one of the things you will benefit from forgiving and forgiving about that. And that is what God wants us to do. He wants us to forgive and forget that thing. Don't remember it. Just let it go. Have you at any time asked God for forgiveness for anything? I know you have because you are not Jesus who was perfect. On many occasions, you may have sinned, did some bad things, offended someone, offended God, and asked for forgiveness. And you hope that that has been forgiven and forgotten. How do you feel that God still judges you of what you did in the past? That you know that was really bad and that really hurt God? God is still keeping it for you and judging you and punishing you for it. And anytime God sees you, He remembers that. How would you feel? Not good, right? It's the same way. What you expect God to do for you is what He is asking you to do for fellow man. Your wife, your husband, your children, your friends, your family member, anybody. Forgive and let go. When you forgive, don't, don't put a boundary. Don't avoid that person. Don't deprive that person of any good, any favor you can give tomorrow. It means you didn't forgive. It means you're still holding on to that anger, that pain, that grief, that pain, that grudge. And that is not going to let you live freely and happen. Whatever the case may be, please. Learn to forgive and forget with free mind, free of charge. God said forgive freely. Do you know what it means by freely? Not with condition. Not with us, lest you give me this, I will not forgive you. That is not free. Not with, don't come close to me, I've forgiven you, but you're not going to cross here again. It is not free. Not I've forgiven you, I will never go to that place again with you. I will never associate with you again. That is not free. You're still holding on to that call, go champion. Please learn to forgive freely. It gives joy and happiness. And you know what? When you forgive Music. your fellow man freely, You'll be rest assured that God will always love and forgive you freely when you ask for forgiveness. So we want to always treat our fellow man just like we want God to treat us. Because your dealing with your fellow man has a lot to do with your relationship with God. Don't forget that. Don't always forget that your happiness is in your own hands. You owe yourself to create your own happiness. Create inner joy, inner peace, happiness. And that starts with your relationship with your God. If you have a sound, clear, good relationship with your God, that is your starting point of lasting peace, joy, and happiness. And that you're building it from the solid ground. Secondly, you want to uh, let go of unnecessary grief, 
unnecessary uh, anger, unnecessary uh, envy, unnecessary keeping malice and quarreling with people and keeping too much expectation from people. You don't want to expect too much from people. When you have a high expectation from people, when they, these people don't meet your high standard of expectation, you feel bad, you feel disappointed, and then you feel pain. Try your best to keep things simple. Control your happiness. Drive happiness to your mind, and you will live long. You will live long. It prolongs it makes the heart live good and pump good. Great music. You know what I mean? So when you realize that your happiness is in your own hand, it makes you step up. It makes you realize that this is your responsibility to make yourself happy. And whatever deprives you of this happiness, let go of it. If keeping malice with someone deprive you of of being happy anytime you think about it yeah, obviously you won't be happy let go of it now let go of it what if so many people have kept malice against each other until the person died they start regretting it i've had an experience of a, two ladies that were fighting for some gossip they have done in many other ways and then the thing get hooked up and unfold the one of them got to know what this one had said and what the other one had not said they kept this grudge this malice the other one was laying a lot of curses on the other lady it will never be well with her she will never see anything good she will never i will never forget many people came to beg this other lady that please let go forget about this even the lady in question that they were fighting together you have forgotten forgive but the second lady keep holding it tight no matter what everybody says she never forgive Anytime you see her, she will talk about the other lady, she will surrender a lot of courses on her, how she will never see happiness, how she will never see good, how nothing will ever concern two of them again in life and all that. Eventually, this other lady died. I expected that the other lady would be happy. Since the person you never want her to be happy, you don't want to forgive her ever, should not experience anything good, now she's dead, you're supposed to be happy. You know what, she started crying and regretting and asking God for forgiveness because she never asked her for forgiveness until she died now. Does that make sense? It don't make sense. It don't make sense. Check it, it don't make sense. Please, we, sh we should learn to forgive, we should learn to live freely, no matter what it is. This is not modern, it's not life. Okay, please, try to make peace with each other, no matter what, live peaceably. God knows why he advised us to live peaceably. We all need friends. We can live alone. You, you can live without a mother and survive you can live without a father and survive you can live without a brother or a sister and survive but you cannot live without a friend we all need companion this companion can still be our father it can be our mother it can be our brother or sister or friends but the fact is that god did not create us to live alone that is why he wanted us to live with each other, surround with each other so that we can be each other's keeper. So that we can show each other's love, get each other's back, know what each other needs and get their back. Are you doing that? If you're not, you're missing out something and you definitely will not be happy living alone. We are made to be companion to each other. Who are you companion to? Who are you friend with? Who are you the best friend? Are you really a true best friend to your best friend? Have you really defined what being a best friend is? A best friend does not discuss his best friend. A best friend does not discuss his or her best friend in any way negative. 
the best friend keep secret keep each other's private matters and respect each other and look for each other and make sure that each other are okay and you don't cross each other's boundary that is what best friend is a best friend reach out a best friend forgives a best friend does not keep malice a best friend does not keep grudges for, for for a day to come and pass that is not a best friend a best friend let it go immediately and let you know what the problem is a best friend advice are you a best friend to somebody who are you a best friend to think about it and make sure that you're being a good friend to someone i remain your humble girl baby good news until next video we talk again but for now please don't call don't call until you give me a thumbs up